the survey they were coming from, and the majority here is on business 203, and more or less uh, they come from um, anatomy, sorry, anthropology, business, uh, education, history, math, OT, physics, and sociology, and basically some of these faculty members, they are the one who help to develop the survey. This is a very important question, is what we want to know and gather from them whether they have been exposed previously to either hybrid or online learning. And basically, we have here the majority said they have not been present or have any other experiences with online learning. Some of them have already at hostels, which is very important for us because this will help us target and improve the services that we provide to them. Here, as for example, as Carlos was mentioning before, some of the reasons why they do really register for the course. And as you can see here, the majority of them, have, because they have uh, other obligations that probably have conflicts with them attending face-to-face uh, -face classes. And this is, for example, an excellent question, which is how would you compare these online courses to an on-campus course in the level of course work difficulty? Like, some students, they have the perception is easier, other might think it is the same or about the same work, but other might say it is a way easier. So here we have here that some of them are just saying uh, it is uh, more difficult, but the majority of them really said that the course is the same level of difficulty. So you can see here, kind of, it is the same in comparison with this student. Here, like, for example, is uh, the distribution according to their responses of how do they think the courses compare in terms of the time they spend working on. And 30% said it is more work. However, the, best, the vast majority of them says it is kind of uh, the same amount of work. And this is important because it has to do with what we mentioned before of the self-discipline. Would they really be able to handle the work? Can they really set time to do what they need to do? Or are able to self-do things without a faculty member being pushing them every single time? And do you feel like you have adequate access to technology in order to fully participate in this online? Here is a very clear response. So students have a lot of access to technology. Sometimes what they just need is a good smartphone. An iPhone and an Android high-end version, and they can participate in this class from anywhere. Doesn't matter where they are, if they're at a job, at home, if they're on the beach somewhere else, they still can submit their responses or their work. Yeah, here you can see. Personal laptops, personal desktop computers, and cell phones are kind of the, the ones that they, they have access to. And they, they will not uh, indicate as, as very high devices that are provided by our institutions as well. 
And here, like for example, the different places that you can and even though uh, actually online you can access from anywhere that you have time, even if like if you work and you have a break, 20, 15 minutes, you can just go and submit work from there. But most of them reported that they actually access from home. And work. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Like for example, we wanted to know how difficult it was to find uh, the information they needed to complete their coursework. And here, for example, what it shows is it is very easy and simple for them to really get the information the faculty member is trying to get across. For example, sometimes uh, one of the claims might be like the student doesn't really interact with a faculty member in an online class as they would do it in person. Of course, you have it in person there. However, you only have usually one hour, 15 minutes, and the professor will not be dedicated only to one student since he has many. But that's not the case here because the interaction is really bigger when you go online. Before you cross that one, Carlos, like here, some of us might think that they might be using some of online chatting or video chatting to communicate with their professor, but that's not true at all either. And this is, for example, how uh, to find, if they really know how to find feedback. And this is extremely important because when you are in a face-to-face -face class, you just ask the professor, and the professor will reply to you back there, but once that professor leave out the room, that's it. You don't really have contact. However, here, they really know what is going on, especially uh, those who use Blackboard. They can, the professor they let, can let them know immediately whether they are doing well or not that well in the course, and they can see also in their grade. As soon as the faculty member grade an item, they see what happened. And if they need additional help, it can be immediately provided to them as well. Here, like for examples, uh, even though they don't see each other and I'm in a fully online class, but can they really interact with uh, their peers in a timely manner? Yes, Blackboard has uh, these tools like uh, Blackboard Discussion Board where they can communicate each other. Also, if they have uh, a wiki, they can do that immediately. And sometimes, uh, sorry, Carlos. Sometimes, for example, if the faculty member see that some of the student, when particular student in his or her class is gone, is disappearing, they always can reach out by phone. 
so that I make sure that the student, whatever the student needs is, it can be supported. This is, for example, we make a question, and this is are the responses gathered in this way of how what the student responded, and one of the most common questions was assignments. Here, you have useful, online, and time, blackboard, discussion board. So the student mostly they answer this kind of question that how useful it is for them. what we thought 